A very good evening to you, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are watching us from. And you are warmly welcome to the Power Impact Series, proudly brought to you by the African Season Speakers Network, where we bring on board speakers all over the world to be a sort of um, source of influencing and source of encouragement, source of upliftment and source of hope to the young people of Africa. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Oswansa, and it is always a wonderful and uh hannah and a pleasure to have you on the show last week was a wonderful time and i'm telling you this week or today is going to be another set of wonderful times you're going to have here so if you are here with me if you're online with me if you're watching me if you are online let me know where you are watching me from let me feel the vibe let me know where you are connecting us from get to the chat area let's know your name let's know where you're connecting us from and I promise you, it's going to be a wonderful episode. So, wherever you are, I want to say welcome to the Power Impact Series. And as we always say, if you want to be a form of a source of support, give us support to reach billions of eyeballs all over the world. The world, we will be sending shortly to you our contact details, which will be scrolling below the screen, and then you can be able to be a source of support to us. But before that, I would just want to take a short commercial break. And right after that, we're going to zoom into what we have for you today. Stick around, don't go anywhere, and we'll be back shortly. Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation, and global shift, our collective of speakers, MCs, and moderators will shift your perspective. Meet our speakers. For booking and interviews, contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info.afsesnet at gmail.com. You can also follow us on all social media channels at AfsesNet Global. African Season Speakers Network, influencing the next generation of Africans. Well, influencing the next generation of Africans. So as I said earlier on, keep sharing the page. Let others also get on board and let people also come in and listen to what we have for you today. Today is going to be a wonderful time. <laughs> I am so, so much uh happy because what we have in the studio here for you you are going to like it and you are going to enjoy it so please don't go anywhere stick around share the page let's hear from you let's hear from what were some of your take homes last week oh, 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 oh. what were your take homes last week ah, you remember the hashtag for last week ah, ah, ah. somebody has got my money so this week we are getting ready for this week's on tag so get in there and let us feel a little bit about you hold on don't go anywhere today is going to be so so wonderful so so wonderful but before that we just want to give you just a short video from last week <laughs> just get a little vibe from last week <laughs> don't go anywhere get a little vibe from last week winning big and that's what we all started 2022 to accomplish i don't know about you but that's how i started of the year with my goals but someone out there might be saying well i haven't won anything big dr o what are you talking about yes you might not have won any big thing but you haven't lost either and if you're thinking you have lost you have the wrong mindset and the wrong perspective you have been on a learning curve yes you have been learning so many ways not to or so many ways to do better
better. So stay on the learning curve because that's what's going to get you to your big win island. Yes. And once you get to your big win island, you can snowball into so many more wins with that momentum. That's how it works, guys. So stay tenacious. Stay encouraged. Keep doing those simple mundane tasks every single day on rinse and repeat. I tell you, you are going to get to your big win. Don't give up. It's not time to throw in the towel. Who told you that? Come on, snap out of it. Let's go. Dr. OJ, the Met Spa Professor here. I love you guys. Mwah. <laughs> that was Dr. OJ from last week. And this week is going to be something special for you to enjoy over and over and over again. So straight to the point for this week. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are going to go straight to what we have for you this week. If you are ready, let's just get a few words from our major sponsor. Thank you so much and welcome to the Power Impact Series. Yes, 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 yes. It is time for us to get straight to what we have for us today or what we are going to experience today. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Oswansa and you are welcome to the Power Impact Series. Get to the chat box area. Let me know who is online with me. Send me where you are joining us from. Send me a hello and let us move on. But we're going straight. To what we have to do today <laughs> wow 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 okay we are about to to what we have today in our studios so let me give you a little bit intro about our guest today right so today our guest is a former active duty member of the U.S. Air Force who honorably served for four years. A strong advocate for women and girls in Sierra Leone. <laughs> Completed an undergraduate studies at the University of the District of Columbia, majoring in public health. A Bachelor of Science in Health Education holder. Now, between 2001 to 2003, our guest was involved in volunteerism work with American Corp as a volunteer director. Our guest is the founder of Impact Sierra Leone, an organization founded to reduce social economic challenges in Sierra Leone through empowerment, education, and building strong partnership with the diaspora community. Our guest has com committed to promoting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, playing a part to reduce poverty. Our guest launched the Seeds of Life project to help over 250 primary school children access fruits and vegetables and learn about wellness. Now the following are recognitions received by our guest today. Yonibana Brand Ambassador, Female Empowerment Entrepreneur, 2019 Uni Excellence Diaspora of the Year, 2019 DDEA Humanitarian Recipient, 2019 Global Goodwill Ambassador. And our guest was among the top 100 recognized human rights defenders in the USA. Now, our guest 
hopes to grow Impact Sierra Leone into a global brand <laughs> that will transform the lives of many people, not only in Sierra Leone, but all around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are ready, just as I am ready here to receive for the very first time onto our platform, the Power Impact Series. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Dr. Adama Kahlo Ko all the way from the United States, but from Sarah Leo. Let's give her a round of applause, man. <laughs> Dr. Hey, Adama, how are you doing? Oh, it is so good to be on this show. It is awesome and amazing. And your energy wow. has already pumped me up. So I am honored <laughs> to be in your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you are warmly welcome to the Power Impact series. This is your first time on the show, right? Yes, it is. Yes, oh, it is. And, uh, I'm already loving the African touch already. <laughs> I did. I said, you know, if I'm going to come onto the African season network, let me bring the Africa out, you know. And uh, it, it is always a beautiful thing to embrace your roots. So I am so honored and humbled. And I cannot wait to be able to share my journey, share who I am, and just share just the impact that I've been able to have in my own little circle to, uh, you know, really improve the world. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you once again, and you are welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are joining us, let us know where you're joining us from. Give us some vibe in the chat area where you're joining us from, your name, and what are some of your expectations for today's episode, because it is going to be something else today. And keep jotting down till we get the hashtag for today. Right. So we're about to zoom into what we have today. So, Dr. Adama. Yes. It, what, what we read was a bit introduction about yourself but hey yes. we have you in the studio we have you here yes. we are having you here yes. now we want to know more about you who is dr adama <laughs> who is dr adama dr adama is a proud proud descendant of sierra leone born in washington dc but nurtured in africa Okay, these high cheekbones you see are a blessing from my mom and my dad. I give them honor, Harriet Maimuna Cisse and James I. Conte. So before I actually even dive into the show, I just want to start with Thanksgiving. I want to say thank you again to my parents who traveled all the way from Sierra Leone and decided that we would be birthed in the U.S. and nurturing nurtured us in, in African roots. So I give thanks to them. I, th I give thanks to my grandmother who I never met. I never met any of my grandparents. However, I carry them with me in my spirit, in my soul, and I stand on their shoulders. So, Ya Adama Kamara, I give you honor. Your granddaughter is here. And I always take every one of my grandparents and my forefathers with me. I take it, I take it very serious that I am a descendant and I have the blood of Sierra Leone running in, and running through me. I give thanks to all of my friends all through the years who just, my ideas of just wanting to start my own foundation and help people in Africa from the roots in, in, in the U.S. I thank those who stood with me and poured into me and all of the ones who around the world have prayed for me, have been on my journey, uh, my crazy journeys. You know, I, I say thank you to them. And I always say thank you to God because he put something in me. He decided before I was born, before I was formed, that I was going to be standing in my purpose as a descendant, as an entrepreneur, as a, own, a business owner, and as someone who is an advocate for people who don't have a voice. And I just want to give credit to God. So I had to, now that we have that out of the way, I want to just let you know that I, I'm an excited, on fire young woman who has always loved to serve. You know, I started in the military and many people were thinking, they look at me and they say, how in the world were you in the military? But right after high school, I served my country. And I always say that it, everything happens for a reason, because the way that I was able to mingle with diverse cultures and people and personalities and just, you know, being able to serve our country, it really put a seed in me that I believe is still carrying to this day in all that I do. Fast forward, you mentioned AmeriCorps. Again, service. I'm a woman who loves to serve. And not with any uh, return, but just to serve. I always really feel that there's something in each of us that is uh, a desire to serve. We have to pull it out, though. 
We have to embrace it. And we have to embrace that there is a purpose in service. Put a purpose in your service because life is indeed short. So as I stand here, I am someone who got over my fears. I have my love for Africa trumped my fears of trying to lead. I ran away from leadership. I tried to be in the background. I tried to be the one who was serving from behind the scenes. But God said, no, you will stand. You will stand strong and you will lead and you will lead with humanity. So I am a humanitarian by heart. And by that, I mean that I, I love to just be the person that makes things better. What can I do to make things better? I am a global goodwill ambassador. Again, just when I decided that I was going to stand out and fulfill what God wanted me to do in my, in my purpose, he opened doors. And so when I decided that I was going to combine my love for Africa with my love for service, boom, that's it. I will tell you that people that know me from years ago still cannot believe that this is the Adama that they see because I did not like to speak. I did not like to be seen. I wanted to just make things better from behind. And I am so grateful that there were people that poured into me, the mentors. When you decide that you are going to do what you're gonna do with passion and heart, people will come. So don't worry about that. For anyone who is thinking, well, I don't have the people that you have. Trust me, when you put your feet and decide that today is a day that I am gonna walk in my purpose and what God has set me to do, those doors will open. So Global Goodwill Ambassador came to me and chose me through my service um, and through my work in Sierra Leone. The love that I have for young girls poured in and allowed me to pour into them and allow me to let them know that you can do it because you are created for greatness, created for excellence. And that didn't come overnight. That came from me telling myself that I was excellent and I was great. So as I know who I am, then I can pour into you even more. Right, right, right. Global Goodwill Humanitarian. Um, again, I was chosen through so many humanitarian awards just from doing what I love. Okay. Do what you love. Okay. Love what you do. And the rest is history. I'm a proud mom of two beautiful kids. My daughter, Miriam, is 10, and my son, Jonathan, is 14. They are my motivation. They are my heart. They give me the push to help other children that don't have, you know, and I am the proud founder and director of Impact Sierra Leone. That is something that actually for the last few years have been a major part of my life. You know, I always, they always say that you have a baby, you have a passion. Impact Sierra Leone is my baby. And I am so thankful for all those who have done all they can to help us keep pushing. And so what I wanted to share with you today is just, you know, not to boast about Adawa, but to let you know that anything is possible if you believe in yourself, if you believe in God, but if you believe that you matter, your being in the world matters. Your being in the world can make a difference and can change a life. So that's a glimpse of me. Um, I know that I left so much out, but again, I am just a descendant who I really feel that I am a game changer, meaning that I'm not born in Sierra Leone. I was not raised in Sierra Leone, but my trip in 2003 in December, was a wake up call for me because I knew what I had and I knew what others did not have. And as someone that is in a diaspora, it's not always common for us to go back and full fledged get into serving our country. There are some that either you love Africa or you did not, or you do not. You, some think that, you know, I need to be getting what I need to, I need to succeed and build my success, build my empire in the US because I was born here. But as a descendant, you have a responsibility in whatever way you can do to give back. That blood that maybe came from your parents, your grandparents, that's no coincidence. You have a responsibility to give back in whatever way. Some people can give more, some people can give less, but you have a responsibility as a descendant who knows your roots. There are so many people that are looking for their roots. So many people are going to get the DNA. You know your DNA. You know where you come from. You have a responsibility to stand in that and to do something. Amen. So as hey. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited because I know that um, there are a lot of people that um, have poured into what you see today. So I have a responsibility to give back to them. So 
<laughs> so much more, but I um I'm just grateful to as a as a woman of the diaspora to be able to use my voice and to carry it wherever I with me and also um to embrace my roots. Right. Right. As you right. can see, my my <laughs> head tie. I, I everyone who knows me knows that I use every opportunity to re, to to remind you that I I am proud. I'm a proud a descendant of Cyril. There's no shame. Right. There's no right. shame. There is no shame. There is no shame. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit about you. We've just tasted a little about you. We're going to taste more. <laughs> We're going to taste more about you. So, right into straight to today's topic that we going to look at or what we going to share being a game changer yeah a game changer so what what necessitated your move to sierra leone in the year 2003 what what caused it what 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 was the whole thing for you to move to sierra leone so I, I did not move to Sierra Leone. However, some people think I moved to Sierra Leone because I have so much involvement there and I'm always um, posting about it. Um, so I would say there, there are a couple of factors. Um, number one, um, let me just say that I was not always a young woman who loved my culture, who loved being African. Growing up in D.C. in the 80s, I you know, was not um, fully embraced, uh, you know, the, the dark skin, the high cheekbones, a different name. I would not say it was always accepted. In fact, I was teased a lot. You know, sometimes things are different. Instead of embracing it, some people go the other route. So I was teased a lot growing up and I was very insecure about being dark skin and I did not own it. I tried to run away from it. I tried to change my name. You understand? Um, and because I felt as long as I can get in, fit in and not be teased or be ridiculed, I'm OK. So but throughout that journey, I would say that my father, James Iconte, always reminded us that you are African princesses. I didn't own it until I was older because I was like, we're in America. We're not in Africa. OK, but he said you are from Africa. You are beautiful. And that, you know, as I said, the power of the word, he poured into us and reminded us that 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 is who we are. And that I believe that that was a seed that helped that was that was nurtured later in years. And so throughout growing up, it wasn't until I got into college and um, I got exposed. So many people would just say, where are you from? And I couldn't I didn't know how to answer that question. I said I was born in D.C. No, but where are you from? It's something different. And I, as much as I as I think my, um, you know, coming into my faith, it really my faith and my culture really played a major role in me embracing who I was. And fast forward, um, you know, my dad, um, who was an anchor in my life and our lives, um, he passed away in 1997. And when that happened, I believe that was like a game changing moment for me as a young woman. Uh, 19 years old without a father, you know, the person who I, I I got all my stories of the village from, the person who always nurtured and said, you will speak and, and, and present yourself so that people will understand you, what's gone. And that devastated my whole life. And so from that, I remembered that he loved, he loved Africa. He loved Sierra Leone so much. And my sisters and I, I believe at that moment, we took in what he lost, what he wasn't able to do at that moment. I believe we decided, OK, you know what? Our dad is gone, but he is not going to be gone. His legacy will continue. And my sister traveled uh, first, my older sister, Fatimata, and then um, my younger sister, Yebu, because I was in the military, I couldn't go. And so when I had the opportunity, I had the funds in 2003 on my own, I said, I am going. And, you know, the family back home had heard about us through my sister. So they were already waiting for me uh, because they knew I was the, the go-getter. So my father, I would say, was a major motivating factor for me to take myself all the way on a United Airlines flight to Sierra Leone. And when I got off that plane, I was I was welcomed with the sign. I got my Conte. At that time, Conte was my name. And I'm thinking, Lord, I hope this is me. And my family at the time, they could come to the airport. They already you know they saw my picture. They were they were ready. My mom has almost 14 siblings. And I think almost all of them tried to come to the airport to welcome Adama. And it was the best feeling in the world. And I knew once that that trip took place and I came back, 
Um, again, I, I told them I want to go to every grandparent. I didn't meet any of them a lot. I said, you must take me there. I must be in the soil where they where they're buried, and I must have said, you know, say the prayers. And I'm Christian. My family's Muslim, but I am we embrace. I said we are gonna be one. And that was the that was the year that changed everything for me. Wow. I'll, I'll come back to that. I want to get to the name you changed your name into. <laughs> we want to get that name you changed to. <laughs> but, but before that, I just want to say hello to uh, our viewers, uh, our friends that are joining us online. I have your Henry Pedro all the way from Ghana. And he says, greetings. Uh, good evening to you all. I have Kwesi Pencil from Ghana. And then I have David Imara or Imwa from Sierra Leone. Yeah, yes. I hope I got your name right. <laughs> I have uh, Michael Sim uh, Turi. And then I have Lady V Bless joining us online as well. You are <laughs> welcome. You are welcome to today's show. It's the Power Impact Series. Right. So, Dr. Adama. Yes. What name did you change your Adama name to? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yes, um, this is actually an interesting topic. Every job I've gone to, it's been like a debate. So, um, when I traveled in 2003 again, I was embraced by all my mom's, my mom and dad's family. And I was just like, you know, Adama, Adama, which growing up in the US, it was Adama. It was easy, you know, and that's what I, you know. But when I went, they were like, your name is Adama. You know, why are you saying that? And Adama is your name. You have to say your name. And I said, okay. So it's really Adama because it's a Muslim name, a uh, Muslim version of Adam. And because my grandmother's name Adama, Adama, then so many other family members, they were like, you need to change my name. So I came back to the U.S. and I was at my church and different functions and trying to tell them. And they were like, but well, this is what we know. And it was such confusing. So, but really that's that's how it came to me. And then it's like an Igbo name. So the Nigerians are like Ada. And then it's, it's also in Ghana. So it's it's always those colorful parts of your life that you get to really have as, a, uh, I would say, a conversation starter. And, you know, but the, the meaning is really mother of the earth. And I always try to wear it. I always stand in it and say, that I have a crown of favor that I must continue to embrace each and every day. And that's why I put this crown on today. So mother of the earth, uh, you know, queen and uh, Adama is really the name, you know, it's just that when you grow up, when you, when you grow up with the name and you pronou you've been pronouncing it, that's, that's definitely part of the education of, right. uh, and the, I think complexities of being born in the U S to parents who are in Africa, because there's your culture, the African culture and energy and that. So it's always this kind of fight to what is what is right <laughs> and what 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 makes you fit in. So to anybody out there, I would say make sure that if, if you're born in, in the U.S. as first generation born, find all kinds of ways to 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 not be embarrassed or ashamed of your culture. Embrace it. It will. It is the best blessing in the world for you to do that. <laughs> it is. It is the best blessing in the world for you to do that. Right. So. Did did um impact Sierra Leone, your organization that you're working with? Yes. Did it start after your first visit to Sierra Leone? Or no, it did not. No, it did not. It did so, not. 2019 is when it, it was officially launched. And if you can kind of see the impact of how many years it took, because again, um, 2003, I traveled to Sierra Leone and I came back and I started to think, what can I do? Because there's so many things that needs to be done. You know, going to some of the communities that did not have light, did not have running water, did not have basic necessities. So I knew that when I came back as a young college student, you know, living with roommates, I started with what I could and I started doing clothes drives and shoes drives and school supplies. And I mobilized my church and we did uh, international. Uh, everyone that knows me, they know I used to plan an international uh, fundraiser for four years straight. And it was all to benefit uh, communities in Sierra Leone. Uh, but again, I was a person that I felt comfortable. You know, you had that comfortable space. I felt comfortable just kind of being in the background. And people would tell me, you need to start your own foundation. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to, I'm not welcoming that stress. I'll just continue doing what I'm going to stay comfortable. And, um, you know, and I, and I, and I just embrace being comfortable. And it, it, it did, I think it just, again, different people coming into my life that would just say, you know, you are a leader. 
I don't know what you think you're not, but you are a leader point blank. And as time goes on, you know, when people feed the right people feed into you, that's why it's, it's always good to surround yourself with great people that will tell you the truth, right. that will pour into you, that will mentor you right. and with no strings. And I think it took, you know, and it was, it was actually God's, I always feel like this was just God's divine purpose. Right. Um, but yeah, 2003 through 2004, um, sorry, 2007, I was just planning this fundraiser. I joined an organization called Me Against Poverty. Um, and I have a, a YouTube video. My my three, two of my sisters, we all came together to try and do something to um, Yoni Bonner Secondary School. That's why I was made the brand ambassador at one point because we went back to the school my dad went and we tried to build a computer learning center. And, you know, so I was always involved in everyone's organization as a helper, as a support as a you know event planner, but never took the time to say I can do this on my own. But again, after you know uh, having the right people in two thousand, and then I was um, embracing um, a lot of humanitarian sustainable development goals. You know, it was just a matter of time. And in two thousand nineteen, with the help of my sister and someone else, that just said I'm going to help you because there's no way that you cannot you know, and you need to be able to do great. 2019, I met someone um, who was in the United Nations and he said, you are rare. I want you to believe that you, there's something unique about you. And because of that, I'll, I'll do my part to help. And I learned that, you know, once you realize your value, your worth, that you are uniquely designed to do something great, there's nothing that is impossible. So 2019 is when we officially launched as Impact Sierra Leone organization. And I'm very grateful for that. It took a lot because the paperwork, but the passion that was deep down in me would not let me stop at all. Right, right. So what what was the message in here for those that are doing stuff like you were doing before 2019? I mean, talking about paperworks and stuff that looks more or less a Herculean tax for certain people that will actually demoralize them to stop right. The real thing that they are doing. What's your message for them? My message for anyone, first of all, discover your passion, discover your purpose. And if you haven't discovered them, pray about it, but get involved. And for me, that's what really helped me just already getting involved and already seeing an impact, sending and shipping clothes and seeing the people who receive it. That was my push. So you got to have something that's going to keep you pushing and that give you that why. If you remember your why, as someone said, the how does not does not matter. And so I just determined myself to sit down and just discover 10 years from now, where do I want to be? What what position in this world do I want to be? In? Do I want to still be helping people thrive in their organizations? Or I want to see how well my wings can fly. I always tell people I'm the black butterfly. And, you know, I said, I'm, I'm going to take myself from a caterpillar to wings. As you can see, the butterflies that are on my wall. It reminds me that we all have the ability to soar. It's just a matter of what you decide in your heart to do. And in my, in my, at that point, because of my service in the military and my service as an AmeriCorps fellow, and uh, I served with a church for years, mobilizing volunteers all over the city to serve in soup kitchens and shelters. It was just I, I, I had no way of running, running away from it. But you have to decide that. Look 10 years from now and put down in your thought, where do you want to be? And we know what happened during the pandemic. There were so many people that died. Their dreams, their desires, whatever they have set out to do is buried with them six feet under. So when you have your mindset, mind is, mindset is everything. Your perspective lets you know that in this world, I have an opportunity to do something great. Once they have read your obituary, people go home. Maybe they remember you. Maybe they don't. But what do you want to be remembered for? So I took I took it and said, you know what? It's either now or never. If not me, then who? And there were so many beautiful people that are around me that I was able to see. And so that's that's really my my advice is that you know you get yourself organized, surround yourself with the right people, and use social media for good. I met so many wonderful, beautiful people on LinkedIn, on um, Instagram, and even at my job. And when I decided what I wanted to do, I started actually on LinkedIn by doing these videos. 
Because someone said, in order for you to really thrive, you need to start doing public speaking. And I said, I don't do public speaking. I don't know how to talk right. I don't know how to flow. It doesn't come out. I'm going to just, I'll just send people encouragements. But over time, you have to come and, and take out the fear. And then realize that there is no fear in failure. So if you think you fail, you get back up and you keep pushing. But I think that, you know, for anyone who has decided that they want to do something, you know, you know, you you emulate find five people on LinkedIn that you feel are doing what you want to do. And look at how they're look at what they're posting. Look at what they're saying. Look at how they're presenting themselves, you know. So there's, there's so many different ways that you can pour into yourself. But I think that once you have the passion and the purpose, that's that's your power. That's your answer. That's where you will lead into being able to launch out. Right. That's that's it. Once you have the passion. Yes. <laughs> so that, that's the that's the full impact in the passion. Yes. Okay. So you might mention that uh, um, someone from the UN saw what you're doing and said uh, you're doing marvelously well and that... Uh, they will do all that they can to help you. What were the kind of help that you received? Were you not receiving help previously or prior to that? Or this kind of help was in a different dimension? What kind of help did you receive from the UN president? You know, so I believe that we're all like a package from the way we dress, from the way we speak. And if you are someone who wants to lead and be a leader, or in, in my case, lead in an international frame, you have to embrace all that that comes with that. And our social media presence, that's where people thrive. That's where people come to find people, to to meet people, and then to also see if they want to invest in you. And so I had, uh, I had um, actually, I had another person before I even came to that, uh, someone said, you know, do you have um, headshots? Because you're going to be asked to speak and you need to be ready. And that whole phrase, be ready, be ready. So when I said uh, come on, coming up with the package, I, I treated myself to a photo shoot. Because I knew that where I was headed, I had to start getting ready. And so the persons that were pouring into me were giving me that advice. Align yourself. You know, use use your, your hashtag, something as simple as making sure you bring the attention that you want that um that you bring that attention to your cause your cause is what is no is from that day forward my cause for sierra leo my cause for empowering my people became my voice and i had to do everything i can to present that in a way where people will gravitate and i started tagging united nations world bank and because i had something to say and this person not that it was anything in monetary form but it was just kind of like giving me guidance Okay, so if you want to, um, you know, work with women, you need to be, you know, embracing that you are a female empowerment leader. That needs to be something that you are speaking to. You know, there's a there's a there's a calculated method when you are on um, social media or just even in this interview. There's some calculated ways in which you are representing your brand. And so at that moment, I decide, you know, I was told you are your brand. And so when you have people that are this again, this is not money. This is just trying to give you guidance on how to stand out because there's so many people doing what you do. There's so many people that are starting foundations, but the ones that are lasting, the ones that are are, are, are not just shutting down. And that was my goal. I said, God, I do not want to start a foundation and then shut down the next year because of my passion and my dream. And I, I made myself um, ensure that I was diverse. Don't stay within one circle. Don't be afraid of diversity. Diversity inclusion is probably the most important thing as a leader in an NGO space should embrace. And so I had people that I had one person, he looked at my biography. First of all, I never had a biography. I had, you know, just like a description. And he asked me, he said, I, I've been watching your videos and I'm impressed. Do you have a biography? And I said, well, I don't have one, but you know, that's for later. He said, you need a biography because where you're headed, Again, the mindset, I knew something greater was coming. And because I knew that other people knew and somebody, one, one person, he took my bio, he took and wrote my whole biography. So I'm just telling you that you represent your brand. Your attitude is everything. Attitude, I always say attitude of gratitude will always increase your attitude. It's, it's something that, that will invite people to help you. 
So if you go in saying that you already know it all, you can know it all, but you will not go higher. For me, I know that I wanted to go further so that I can help more people. So that's that's my home. Team. I didn't get a lot of monetary support. I got a lot of uh, wealth and, and, and advice that I feel like was priceless. You know, wow. It was priceless based on the advice that you were getting. So it wasn't physical things or let's say they were giving you money, but then the kind of advice, the kind of the shaping. Mentorship. The shaping. I have yeah. some men I have some people that decided because of what I presented to them, because of the what they saw that I did with my own resources. Because I always tell people, don't wait for people to give you money to do great things. Right. Okay. Right. Stand out there, you know, and I'm not saying to go sell your house and then be sitting on the street. Be wise, use wisdom. But if you have an extra amount of money, you know, maybe you can turn that into if you have some one girl or one person that you can impact, you can tell the story without exploiting them. That's an important thing. Tell the story and let people know what you're able to do without resources. That's when the door is open, you know. Right. Tell the story. Wow. Tell the story. Yeah, so I just want to push up something here. Wow, that's a headshot for you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you go ready. It was an event. I, you know, and the person that I, and again, I, my, I credit so many people. Uh, the lady who still does my makeup to this day, you know, she knows me from when I first came and sat in her chair, and she said, "You're gonna be something big." And and then the person who took the the, the, the photos, he said, it's something about you. You're going to be something big. And he said, you know, you know, and I and I, I turned I was trying to cancel the photo shoot because I was like, this is too much money. But I invested in myself because I knew where I was headed. So I always tell people, just take time and find ways, whether it be trying to improve your wardrobe or just looking at ways that you can practice. You don't need a, a show for you to actually speak to people. Use the platform. And do videos, even if it's just one topic. I want to talk about how to inspire people. Use that and run. There's some you can all anybody can be a game changer. Period. Uh oh. <laughs> this anybody can be a game changer. So you can write in the corner where you find yourself. Make yeah. use of what you have at where you are. And that is where you're going to be that game changer. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Dr. Adama for you. And that is the nugget she is blowing us with. Yes. Be that game changer. So yes. we want to get back to Impact Sierra Leone. Let's see the yes. game change with Impact Sierra Leone. What was, this, what was the, the whole situation like before you got in with Impact Sierra Leone and you became a game changer? Right. So let me first start by, number one, when I... Um, visited Sierra Leone. I knew that I wasn't just visiting as an American girl. I had to visit with a, um, an African-American girl who loved her culture. And when the people see that you love your culture, like I always say, I'm always, when I go there, I love the music, I love the outfits, and I brought that back to me when I came um, back home. I did not leave it there. It was not like, okay, you guys won't know this side of me. I took it with me everywhere I go. So when I think about Impact Sierra Leone, um, first the name is self-impact. Um, nothing I do in life, I always tell people, if I can't inspire you, if I can't impact you, then I don't feel like I've done enough. I don't feel like I've really poured into you and made a difference. And learning from different people, you know, what you say at your mouth is impact. What you do, the action that you do, again, actions. And what I want to read is I want before I get into that, I want to read a quote because this is quotes are um, a lot of the things that inspire me and keep me motivated and, and impact Sierra Leone. And it says, do more than belong, participate. Do more than care, help. Do more than believe, practice. Do more than be fair, be kind. Do more than forgive, forget. Do more than dream, work. And this is by William Arthur Ward. And what this quote means to me is to what? To do, to act. And when I first entered into the village that I'm serving um, and the communities I'm serving right now, what I saw is that I could not just go there as some American looking cute, just kind of like, oh, this is so nice. I'm just here and, and I can't wait to leave. You know, I had to get in and embrace the people. And when people see that you have a love for them, that is the door to them saying that, you know what, I, I also want to be a game changer. 
So I, I went in thinking, I don't want to just go donate water, donate clothes and say that I've done a good job and come back and put pictures about all that I've done. I wanted the people that were there to be impacted, the people to be changed. And so over the years, for these last couple of years, we've been able to work and serve orphans, meaning ship books. And uh, our core words are empower, enrich, and educate. Because those are, if you can educate a person, you know, their minds, if you change their mindset, even if they're in the poor slums, they can think and they can do anything that they can put their mind to. And they become change agents in their community. And as you can see, I love pouring into the girls. I always want them to, when I leave their presence, my presence is still with them, even when I'm gone. That is the goal. And so as you can see here, um, Impact Sierra Leone, we got recognized when I was able to become a Global Goodwill Ambassador. And when that happened, I, I was able to um, take a lot of the initiatives, my body is my body, teaching child safety in the village. It was such an amazing thing to know that so many of our, our, our young kids are going through child abuse, molest, molestation, and they're not going to school. And so I had to think about, I need to, education is the best way to eradicate poverty. And so that seed that was planted in me was in everything that I did, I always make sure that I, I talk about the education through pictures, through visuals, through everything that I can. So we were able to work with the Unibana Secondary School. During the COVID, um, we had a partnership with them. This is the school that we tried our best to build a computer learning center. And through that, we continued the relationship, continued talking about them, and we were able to give them COVID supplies. I'm a public health guru. I went to school for public health. So wellness and health is always integrated in everything that I do. And I'll get to some of the things that I created. Um, I'm a creative spirit. Uh, as I said, I love to create flowers. I love to create pictures. I love to um, just do, I had a power, uh, a, a thought that there's power in words. So in every person, in every community, I always took my skill. And one thing I want to say is that your gift, as they say, will make room for you amongst greater people. And I took that, the gifts that God put in me, I could not shut them down and, and leave them out of what I was doing for Africa. They had to come with me. So I brought my gifts to the table. I brought my gifts to educate. And I'm gonna share with you some of the pictures that I made um, just to, well, let me get back to it. Let me, let me, I'm gonna get to that, but I wanted to show you some of the things that we were able to do. Um, we ship clothes, um, barrels of clothes and shoes throughout the year. And I call it the Barrel Spout Barrel Spout Salon Program. So those who always are thinking, I, you know, I have some nice clothes and good condition, summer wear, you know, like, in the, you know, the good season wear, let me know because I'm always taking shoes. And um, when the, the people, I've actually been able to witness them get the shoes and clothing, it is a blessing because we know that, you know, they, they, they have more than what they had before. And it's, it's a blessing. And um, we've been able to um, do um, end of year party, end of year celebration where we feed and we we, we have um, provide just um, things that they have not been able to afford, you know, like the pinata. I use my creativity to make sure that I take them into different things that they've never seen before. And I do it with joy. Um, but the last year, as you said, I launched um, a project called Seeds of Life. And Seeds of Life was started as a result of me um, uh, collaborating with this community called Fonya Village. And um, I was introduced to this community because I was working with other communities, but they were getting help from other organizations. And I decided I want to work with a community that's not getting help from anyone. And this community is a remote community. No one really goes there. And I was introduced there and I fell in love. And it's a farming community. So I came knowing that I had to meet them where they were. And so I've been supporting them with their agricultural projects. And we worked with the school. The school um, there uh, houses over 250 children. They don't have a school feeding program. So I decided, you know what, let's teach and, and try to start a garden, a, a, a farm behind the school. And that's really where Seeds of Life came from. And from that time, we've been able to grow okra and um, pepper and pineapple we have pineapples behind there um and um now the the and that was just with the children but you can't leave out the parents the family and we held so many different work we held wellness workshops um we held a literacy book drive we shipped um two 
large barrels of books. Uh, last year we did a book drive, and I thank everyone who participated in that because for the for a lot of the um, the uh, the communities, over eighty percent illiteracy rate. So that was a passion in me to try and do what I can to bring um, to close that gap. And um, the school I was able to visit. Um, you know, it's in poor condition. However, I didn't go there saying this is a poor community. I wanted them to know that they were powerful in what in their current state and that I was going to do what I can to be their voice. And so to this day right now, they just um, uh, harvested over 15, almost 15 bags of groundnuts. And uh, I don't know if I share that with you, but, you know, and so now the community is, they're ready for cassava, but the chiefs and the elders, we had an end of year party for them and we brought school supplies for the kids. The chief and the elders came to this and they said, we bless Impact Sierra Leone. And I, I felt honored going back that at least the community can feel pride in the community that, you know, there's something that, that someone a uh, young girl that's in America cares about them, loves them. And this is the community not too far from where my dad was born. So again, I pulled for my dad. I pulled that the, he wasn't able to live his life, but I can stand and represent him in the best way that I can. Okay. But, and I'm sorry, I'm just kind of going on, but I wanted to show you some of the pictures that we created to go along with our, um, our program. Um, wow. In addition, um, so I, I create posters for the kids. Um, education is power. Our health and wellness matters. Um, their wellness matters. I want them to feel empowerment. Um, I just research and with the things that we're going to grow, I want them to learn about the benefits. So the benefits of Lyme. They have the and these they, these posters are with them in Sierra Leone. Um, you know, so I'm just telling you that use your create creativity, use your gift, and um, it will. It's like the possibilities are endless. Wow! Use your creativity because the possibilities are endless. I, we, I'm just so amazed and uh, overwhelmed by the things you're doing to to return back to your place yes. that you were not born there, but you had. A desire to go back and then change the lives of yes. people you really know you you actually didn't know them you had to go no, and then, not at and all. then kind of foster the kind of relationship that your yes. grandparents and your parents left yes we want to say congratulations for what you're doing yes and we yeah. really we are in support of what you're doing and all the people of Sierra Leone Yoni town want yes. to say thank you for what you're doing for us because yes. this is powerful. this is the impact we're looking for no wonder the name of the organization is impact Sierra Leone. Yes. you are really making an impact <laughs> yeah. you are really making an impact so, so before we we come back to hear from what our audience will say we just want to just take a short commercial break and right after that we're going to read the comments from our viewers so stick around don't go anywhere thank you Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation and global shift, our collective of speakers, MCs and moderators will shift your perspective. Meet our speakers. For booking and interviews, contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info dot at gmail.com you can also follow us on all social media channels at abscessnet global african season speakers network influencing the next generation of africans influencing the next generation of africans exactly what impact sierra leone is doing they are impacting the next generation of sierra leoneans to take poor positions in africa or wherever they find themselves yeah and that is being championed by dr adama uh she's doing something something else she's doing yes. so well and we are so happy to have you on the power impact series it's all about impact and that yes. is what you do. right so let's get some vibe from our viewers and what he's saying okay so michael says these are the kinds of Sierra Leoneans we are expecting to see who strive to put the country's flag on the map with innovative ideas. Thank you, Dr. Adama. 
Mm -hmm. uh, David says, wow, Dr. Adama, I want to say to you, I admire you or I admire your courage. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Sally uh, answers a question. She says that uh, uh, is passion equivalent to talent? That's Sally's question. She wants to have a question. Uh, so we'll mm -hmm. come back to it. Gonna come yeah. back to it. <laughs> Gonna come back to it. Um, Kola Nut, all the way from the northern part of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he says, I think when he you saw your, your head shot, he said, that is a kilowatt smile. <laughs> your personality shines out through the smile. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, Kekeli says, keep going with this amazing program to keep changing our beautiful Africa. God richly bless you, madam for supporting our children. Yes. Uh, Santi Gabriel says, use your creativity. I think mm -hmm. he's picking up on what he just said. And then uh, Kola comes in again to say, community and communal projects is the way to go. Yes. Young girls have something to look forward to. Yes. How about letting the young girls draw and use their own pictures for the posters? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. That's and a good then, Seeing their own creation in such posters also ensures them knowing it's going global. Kudos. Yes. Right. So that's some of the few comments we have any other one to share. But then we'll go back to the question that uh, Sally asked that uh, is passion equivalent to talent. <laughs> so I'm thinking about that question. Um, there's a lot of talented people in this world that don't have passion. There's a lot of passionate people in this world that don't have talent. Wow. When those two come together, I believe that is where the powerful force takes place. So I don't really believe that it's fully equivalent because again, if you, you can have one without the other, there's a lot of talented people that also are committing crimes. Do you understand? So I think it's just in the way it, I don't know if that's really answered, but I feel like a passionate person that has talent, I believe that's the most powerful force in the world because the passion, if it's inside of you, will not die. So you give all you can to your talent. You will nurture it. You will allow it to grow and you will allow it to also help people. It wouldn't just be for you. It would be for others to see. So I believe that together, uh, you know, you really can't separate the two. But there are definitely a lot of talented people that have zero passion. They just are talented. They're gifted. And there are a lot of ta uh, passionate people that may not necessarily have the talent, but they have the heart. But when you put, put those two together, then you have that force. And um, I believe that's really where I feel like I've, I've been blessed to, to have the gifts, but also have the passion that goes behind it. You know, that, you know, and I also wanted to add that that's that's actually a great idea. One of the things that we did do with the school, um, we did realize we came into the school working with the teachers. I didn't come in there and say, you know, I know what I'm doing. You guys don't. One of the things that is most important is to always um, be unified with the community that you're serving and allow them to feel that they are also a part of the change. It is a big it is a very critical part of community development, really embracing the community that you're serving. You're not serving them. You guys are serving together for the betterment of that community. So it's a very important deal for me to include the children. So that's why we had them in the garden, um, learning and seeing the seeds that they planted and that it's growing. It's, it's, it does something for their mind. And so in doing that, we also noticed that, you know, the curriculum, you know, the teachers, unfortunately, not, they're not a lot of teachers and not a lot of teachers that are paid. So that affects the, the curriculum and the education that is received. So I, I decided, you know, I want to, you know, compliment and I created a WhatsApp group. And they were excited because just to be able to communicate, it felt it, it, it made them feel valuable. And I would share different things. And one of the things that we did, I said, I would love for you guys to draw the Africa that you want, the Africa that you want to see. And it was mind blowing what we were able to see on the paper, but we've not gotten far to kind of showing them how to do this. So that's a good idea that I'm going to take back to the community because we talk every week. And just to show you that this, this is not a one-stop shop. This is not just, we want to see them and every year and, um, you know, see them in, during Christmas. We decided that we were going to start a collaboration. 
So we, when I went in December and the chiefs and elders welcomed, we had a celebration. We had the traditional music. And after giving the, the they, they saw this, this organization really wants to help us. And I, I sat down with the community. I said, what do you want to see? They said, we are farmers. We need help. And we put ourselves together and when we came back, I put that their needs, we worked together to you know, clear the lands that they wanted. They provide the land and we provided the seeds and the tools. And that's really how it started. And every month we have a meeting with the farmers. I feed them, I nurture them. And they feel, some of the women are saying, and we never had this feeling in the village. Everyone would laugh at our village. Now they see us. And that's what makes me feel like I've done a little bit of something. And in April or March, it was Women's Empowerment Month. I decided and I saw that, you know, the women were not as inclusive, included in the community development. I decided I wanted to throw them their own celebration. And I was all the way here in America, but they connected me. And what's up? That's what I'm saying. Creativity. You know, always use and think outside the box. And I, I let them an audio of encouragement and they translated it. Someone translated it in their language. And I'm just trying to create the picture in your mind, how the, the possibilities are endless when you want to develop a community. When they feel that you have included yourself in them and you are with them, there's so many things that you can do. And they and they feel that value within themselves. And so from that, that particular celebration for the women, the women launched their own farming collaborative. So the women have their own collaborative and they just, on this, this today, they're harvesting their own groundnuts. So it's 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 just the, the, the heart that I have. And it's like, my mind is always buzzing. What next? What can I do? And hopefully we, 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 I had a chance to talk to them. The women said they want to own business. They want to use their hand. So by God's grace, and I hope that if you're listening to this and you, you feel like you can help and support, we want to launch an empowerment center where we can have skills um, training. Sewing machines. Uh, we can teach the kids uh, Scrabble. I got uh, on my uh, in my suitcase as we speak. I've already started packing for my trip. I bought chess. I bought Scrabble. I bought uh, all these different games that will enrich them. Um, and um, soccer balls we're going to be providing for them because that's a big part of their community. They love soccer. So again, meeting where meeting them where they where they where they are. But that's our future goal is to launch an empowerment center where they can be able to sew clothes and maybe we can, you know, make crafts and and the farmers can be able to sell their goods, you know. And it's just a step further that will allow them to um to reach their greatest potential. So it's you know, as I say, greater is coming. Greater is coming for Impact Sierra Leone, you know, just and, and one thing I would advise everyone, start where you are. There's a lot of organizations that may be doing bigger and better things, but start where you are and don't give up. Use everything that you have inside of you to put things in place, but do not compare yourself. Look at the greatness in you. Don't look at the left, look at the right, but look at what is in front of you and look at what's within you and you will not go wrong. But it's the minute that you start um, comparing yourself and looking at other people and looking at what other people have, you will lose sight of your goal. You will lose sight of why. Why are you doing this? You know, so I I, I, I I have to say thank you to the community of Foindu Village that is located near Mile 91. They have embraced me. Um, we have challenges up and down, but at the end of the day, we don't lose sight that we want this the community to be better than when we started. Well, we want to be better than when we started. Obviously, you always want to be greater than yeah. how you started. And that is it. You are a game changer. Yes. Love that. You are a game changer. Yes. You have just come down within your mains and yes. then to the people that you can bring life and hope to. And that is what Impact Sierra Leone is doing. And we want to congratulate you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Sally says, thank you for the insight. It is deep. So what we ask the question about if passion is equivalent to talent. So she really appreciates the insight you've given through your I can't wait to hear about Sally, your talent and your passion right. being born and coming out. I know that right. there's there's something in you. There's a leader in you that's going to do great things. That's how you're doing great things. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Collaboration and putting the people's needs first is impactful. You are creating long-lasting development. You are yes. in with them to raise their own value. Yes. Passion and talent-driven development. Scrabble and play-based learning for the children oh wow 
you are a phenomenal keep up the good work that is coming from mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. and we are so grateful so bam, ba, da, ba, da, <laughs> as we always do it yes the hashtag for today i mean you you know today i, I have a lot of hashtags <laughs> <laughs> i have a lot of hashtags because because uh, because this woman has blown our mind <laughs> with what she is doing the game changer she has become yes and the game changer she's transforming lives in sierra leone to become and for that extension to the power impact platform the kind of game changing mindset you brought to us today yes. we are going to make you the of it and then yo so we go para 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 papa whoa so we have two tags you can bring your own <laughs> you can add your own to it. so the first one is be ready just yes. be ready make sure mm-hmm. at all times you are ready with all the necessary tools and things you need it yes. cannot it might not be physical money but your presence the yes. way you carry yourself the way you put your things together and then what you have at where you are that you are making the impact with so be ready yes you got her headshots <laughs> yes yes, so yes. Ready. Yeah. and then yes. the second one is start where you are start where you are yes that is where you're going to make that impact when you get ready you start where you are you put yourself out there and you are going to get your helpers they are going to come on board they yes. are going to you make that impact that needs to be made yeah. wow so what is the next move for impact sierra leone what are your next projects or plans you have so again as i said we want to expand seeds of life we started out thinking oh this is a nice thing to build a garden and launch a farm behind a kid's school but now it has transformed to four different farm sites and so we we want to take it bigger we want to grow fruits and vegetables of all kinds and we want to turn some of the the community into business owners so that they can also be entrepreneurs and they can have something because the poverty is high and the food insecurity is high There's a lot of people that don't eat three meals a day, three healthy meals a day. The disease rate is high. You know, so simple things as malaria and diarrhea run rampant amongst the children. So in that aspect, I want that we want to take it to the next level of improving their health and wellness. If I if I cannot be able to improve the health as a public health person, I would I would be a feel ashamed. And so I want to incorporate working with the clinics, um, the, the nurses that are there so that they can kind of collaborate with the schools. But also, you know, our next thing is to work with the school, improve the school, improve the curriculum and, and work with the community that step by step. You know, if we can be able to build a, a right structure where we can get computers, we can link with people. I have so many people that see what I'm doing online and want to pour from America and do some kind of online. That's our next step is to really try to take them to the next level. And it's possible. And then once we have done that, we can move on to another community. But one of the things that I always try to do is I think about the children that are there. What what does their future look like? And so I constantly when we went, I asked, I went down the road, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? And just the fact that I was talking to them was my was was something I think that that really put something in them. They smiled, they laughed, and some cried because no, who else, who made me never talk to them and ask them, what do you want to be? And um, I, I committed that, you know, we're going to pour into the children so that, you know, they can become leaders that come back to their village and do the same thing that I'm doing. If I have been able to do that, then that's that's legacy right there. So we're going to um, kind of I, we adopted this community and we're going to stay with them maybe um, for a little bit while longer. I'm going there in December. And by God's grace, we're taking school supplies, but we want to uh, be able to enrich them in a way where they can become entrepreneurs. And I leave this by saying um, I'm not just going to be based in that community, but I wanted to see us being able to grow and nurture and, and build with a community and, and see their progress um, right in, within that time. But I always um, um, try to share the, the power of words. And I, anyone who is watching this, I want you to take away um, my favorite P words um, when thinking about just something that you want to start, something you want to do, something that you want to build. Um, because I want everyone to understand that you should be building for your 
to your generations to come, not just for tomorrow or just next week. Build for what you want to see happen in, in a positive way for generations to come. So the first thing you need to do, um, if you're a spiritual person, pray. Pray for the vision. Pray for the vision of what, what it is that should be um, your brand that you will use as your platform. Uh, prepare. Do the research. Research who is doing some doing what you want to do very well. Prepare financially. Prepare mentally. Prepare your calendar because time management as a leader, if you don't have time management, being able to manage, I could miss this, this wonderful show if I wasn't able to manage and prepare. Um, so uh, prepare um, just um, the, 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 the skill sets, you know, what is needed to thrive in what you're trying to do. Plan, you know, plan wisely, plan um, your, the people that you're, you're, you're trying to um, impact. You want to be able to use your time. Every second counts. This second that's about to leave us, we're not going to get it back again. So time is precious. Just like say money is, time is probably the most precious thing in this world. So you got to pray, you got to prepare, you got to plan, and you have to perform. Give it all you got as if it was your last day on earth. Perform like no one else. There's something unique in you. Use that uniqueness to be your greatness. Don't try to fit in and mold with someone else. Use your uniqueness, your unique value, your ability for me. I love to smile. I love to laugh. Some people say, you're not serious. You know what? I'm using my skill to embrace and motivate other people. So take those peas. I hope they can help someone. I always have my own affirmations every morning. I wake up. Today is going to be, I always tell the day, it's going to be a great day, no matter what. And stand in that. And be positive. Be positive. That's the bonus P. Be positive. Things happen. As I said, I lost my dad in 1997. I lost my younger brother, uh, my baby brother in 2020. And so many other things happen in life that would just kick you off your horse. You get back up and you remember why you're here. The blood that is still running in your veins is for purpose. So purpose, 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 walk in it, stand it, embrace it, speak it, allow it to be everything that you give it all you got. Because when that chapter is closing your life, you want to have that moment that you have done the best that you can do while you have had the ability to be on this earth. All right. So I thank everybody for this time. And um, to all my beautiful black women with high cheekbones, embrace that you are a beautiful soul. Know that the crown of your head is because you are a queen. Step in it, stand in it. Don't look to the left, look to the right, but look at what, what is within and continue to thrive. Don't just survive this world, thrive, okay? Because you are a star. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pray, prepare, plan, perform, and be positive. That is the peace that yes. <laughs> Dr. Adama is living with you. We yes. want to say very big thank you to you, and you, you have already left a legacy. Yes. In Sierra Leone. That yes. What the next ones you're about to do, you're just building on the legacy you've actually yes. left there. Everyone is a thank you for that. And, uh, and I'm on social media. Blessing. So connect with me on Instagram, on uh, LinkedIn, on Facebook, and www.impactsierraleone.org. That is our website. We are always welcoming people to the family. And if you, even if you just want to say a word of encouragement to keep me pushing, I always am welcome to that. Thank you. Right. She's always open to that. Thank you so very much for joining us for today's episode. It has been a wonderful time. Yeah. And then if we didn't hear anything at all. Yes. About how to be game changers. Yes. Wherever yes. we are. And, yes. uh, on behalf of the team from African Season Speakers Network, we want to say a very big thank you to all of you that join us online and those that will be watching later on. We always continue telling you to share the page and let others also benefit from these wonderful nuggets that yes. are being shared by our wonderful speakers all over the world. <laughs> As I always say, dreams are in levels. Make sure you get to the top level of your dream. So we meet again next week. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Ozoanza. And catch you same time next week for another powerful mm -hmm. impact series, which is going to change your life and change the life of people that are around you. So, so same time next week, we want to say have a wonderful week. 
Bye-bye. See you same time next week.